Hello, uh, my name is Mike. I'm going to be doing a few Ableton tutorial videos and putting them up here on YouTube. Um, this is going to be the first. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick overview of just kind of the Ableton workflow. Um, and we'll go from there in later videos. So let's, uh, let's get it started. Um, so this is Ableton Live. Obviously, this is version 8. Point, let's see. 8.25. And this is the Ableton Live Suite. Um, it comes with, Suite just comes with a bunch of extra built in instruments and effects and stuff. Um, and obviously, it costs a bit more money, but I think it's worth it. <coughs> So, um, the first thing that you should know when, when dealing with Ableton Live is that it is a, um, it has an all live processing workflow. So none of the effects or anything use destructive audio. Everything is done uh, in real time. So this gives you the benefit of actually being able to use Ableton as a performance tool rather than just a uh, your normal digital audio workstation, um, but it has that kind of the downside of being pretty CPU intensive, and I find that some of the effects, um, since they are rendering everything in real time, don't actually give you the you know as good of a output as some non-live effects. But they're still, still really, really good. This is still a fully professional audio workstation, no matter if you're using it for performance or for um, production. Uh, and since it's geared towards both of those things, performance and production, there's actually two overall layouts that you will spend most of your time in in Ableton. Um, the one that I have up here is called the Session View. Um, and this is what you use most of the time when you're doing live things. And then if you click over here, this is the arrangement view. And this is what you would use most of the time when you are using Ableton for, to make songs. Um, and I'll go into more detail on both of these in this video series. But for now, I'm going to stick with the session view. Um, session view is what I use the most, and uh, there's a lot of things that carry over between the two views, so I'm just going to start off showing you some things on the session view. Um, but before I do that, I am going to tell you kind of what's going on in this top bar up here. So, Ableton does automatic beat gridding, or quantization, um, and in order to do that, it, it uses a master tempo set to the master clock. Um, and so that's that setting right here. So right now, this Ableton default setting for the master tempo is 120. Um, you can move it up or down um, as you see fit according to the, the, the kind of music that you're doing. Um, here's a little tap tempo button so you can tap a tempo out and it'll figure that out for you. Um, these are nudge buttons um, so that you can kind of nudge the, the BPM either way. Um, here's your global time signature. Here is uh, a metronome. So you can put that on and when you point it, just gives you a little metronome. Um, here's your transport controls and this just shows you what beat you're currently on the standard play stop record um, this is your quantization setting so this is the closest beat or the closest interval um, that the global quantize is going to use whenever you do something um, this will make more sense later I usually have mine set on either 1 8 or one sixteenth note. Um, here's your pencil. 
so this allows you to write things in, and you'll see more of that later. Um, over here, this button turns on and off a uh, your computer keyboard to use as a little MIDI keyboard. Uh, it can be kind of nice. Um, this is your button to assign keyboard shortcuts. Uh, this is your button to assign MIDI shortcuts, or just MIDI controls. And this is your how, how hard your audio engine is, is working. Um, and you can turn the audio engine on and off right there. Um, over here is where you can view your library. Um, this button opens and closes that tab. Um, and this is where you go to find all of your instruments and effects um, and stuff like that. As you can see, there's actually quite a few. Um, and there's several tabs here. This one is for plug-in devices. Um, this is just a kind of a, a just an emulated window into your local file system. All three of these uh, you can go and change the folder there as you, as you like. Um, I usually have that minimized because it just kind of gets in the way. So, um, now onto, the, onto the, the meat and potatoes of things. The, one of the biggest things in live are um, called tracks, um, and that's these guys right here. Uh, tracks can be of a couple different types. Um, one is an audio track, holds audio data. Um, another is a MIDI track, which holds MIDI data. Uh, another is called a return track, which it's not letting me put in, but um, I will go over return tracks in a later video. Um, and then you have your master track, which is just like on um, you know any normal mixer this is your master output. So, all of these tracks hold what are called clips and that's what's in these these little boxes right here. Um, you can create a new clip, clip just by double clicking. Um, on a MIDI track, you can't do that on an audio track because it doesn't um, have any data to put there, so you actually have to record into a clip in order to make a new one or drag in a clip from your library. Um, so in session view these these clips are laid out vertically. In arrangement view your tracks and clips are laid out horizontally much like a normal um, DAW timeline. Uh, down here in this section is your mixer so each of your clips has um, volume controls. Uh, you can turn the track on and off. This is your panning uh, solo button. Solo button just makes it so that, that only the clip that is soloed is played. Um, a record button. Um, or generally you just call that the arm button. So if you have a MIDI device plugged into this, you hit the arm button, and then that will be getting input from the MIDI device. <coughs> also, um, clips and tracks are arranged horizontally in session view into these things over here that are Ableton calls scenes. Um, really the the main feature of scenes is that you can launch all of the clips in that scene um, together as one. So if I had four MIDI tracks and I launch this, you see every clip in that scene gets launched at the same time. So that's, I mean, it's good for um, laying things out in a performance way. Uh, I don't tend to use them that much and there's a few other cool little features with them that you can kind of hack your way into, but that's the main thing. Um, 
pretty sweet. One, uh, one more thing you might have noticed. Um, down here is the device view. So this kind of has two views to it as well. So when you have a audio or a MIDI clip loaded, it, it brings up the information about the clip at hand. Um, and I'll go into more details about all these parameters and stuff later. Um, and then you can click over here, and this is your this is where you drop your effects and stuff in. Um, so I can just drop a filter into here, and you just click and drag. And each each track has its own device view. So that's kind of like a rough general overview. Um, in the next video we'll get into more things as far as uh, performance in session view and uh, we'll go on from there. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care.